Marshawn Neeland is one of the craziest rookies in the NFL. At one point, he just had one offer coming out of high school, and that was to Western Michigan. Recruiters and scouts just didn't think he could get it done, and after being a two-star player, he ended up being a star for the Broncos, had one of the best raw athletic scores we've seen in years, and became a second-round pick to the Dallas Cowboys. Unfortunately, he's also had to deal with a lot of tragedy, as his mother tragically passed away just a couple of weeks before the draft, but right now, he's seen as one of the better athletes in the rookie class, and today we're going to talk about his journey, his story, and how all this happened. We're also going to talk about how he could do with the Cowboys, but before we get started with the video, if you're a big fan of college football, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you can support today's video, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I can cover next. Now let's get started and talk about the insane rise of Marshawn Neeland. So in order to understand how Neeland got to this point, we first need to go back in time. He ended up growing up in the city of Grand Rapids, Michigan, and his mother Wendy would take her son to football practices and games all the time, and he always told her about his goals of one day reaching the NFL and signing a Division I scholarship. Wendy was a football mom through and through, and she was the hand that helped Marshawn toward his dreams. He said, quote, She was the one driving me around, trying to find a place for me to do football when I was younger, and I started off with two-hand tap football. She was there for all my games in high school, as much as she could. She ended up helping him a lot in his younger years, and he always had the dream that he was going to go to the NFL. He would eventually make it, but as I said, she wouldn't be there to see it, as she passed away from some sort of illness just a couple of weeks before the draft. Neeland's football journey really began to take shape as he transferred to Godwin Heights High School in Grand Rapids. As a football, basketball, and track star at Godwin, Neeland was awesome and a showstopper for them. The school was short of both offensive and defensive linemen, so the coaches placed Neeland on the defensive line, and I guess it worked. Flash forward to later on in his career, he became a force to be reckoned with as he played both linebacker and tight end and also played on the offensive line a little bit for the Wolverines. His coach said, quote, He's pretty much dominant on both sides of the ball. He's really dominant on the defensive side, and he's a run stopper, and he's just dominant off the edge as a pass rusher. He ended up becoming an all-conference player as a junior and came back even better as a senior. He would eventually record double-digit tackles in each of his first five games, including three sacks in one performance. His strength made it difficult for offensive linemen to block him, and even with double teams, teams just could not protect that side of the ball, and it was a struggle for them in the passing game. He was just that dominant. As a tight end, he also provided the Wolverines with a lift, as he was both a strong blocker and a sure-handed catcher. But despite his dominance, really only one FBS school wanted him, and that was Western Michigan. There's one story in particular that was pretty cool, as it had nothing to do with football. This in fact happened at the breakfast table when Neelan was at Western Michigan for his visit, and this apparently even grabbed the attention of University President Edward Montgomery. During his official visit, apparently Neelan could not eat enough pancakes and had seven different plates. Whoever was serving the actual breakfast offered the president an extra plate, and after he didn't want it, Neelan raised his hand and ended up getting that plate. It might seem silly, but Neelan's appetite helped him earn a scholarship to Western Michigan, and he would then sign his national letter of intent to join the Broncos program. Part of that was because he transitioned himself from 195 pounds to then a 6 foot 4, 245 pound lineman. Head coach Tim Lester said, quote, We liked him when he was at 195 pounds, and he was an athletic kid, but it was a question of if he could get big enough. He ended up going under the radar because he didn't have a great junior season. But Lester said, quote, One person we kept hearing about was Marshawn Neeland. Every school I went into, they asked, Have you been to Godwin Heights yet? Yep, he was a pretty big deal. He ended up finishing his high school career as the all-time leader in tackles, tackles for losses, and sacks, which included a senior campaign of 110 tackles, 15 TFLs, and 8 sacks, which also earned him a first-team all-selection. He also caught 20 passes for 330 yards and 5 scores, and this guy was a certified star. Apparently, he was really close to committing to Western Illinois, but that came before Western Michigan offered him a scholarship on December 14th. In the end, it was the program's family atmosphere and the proximity to home, plus I assume the ability to play in the FBS, that convinced him to play in Kalamazoo. Coming out of Godwin Heights, he only had that one scholarship offer and chose to go there, as he said, quote, I wasn't heavily recruited coming out of high school, so for these guys to reach out to me and showcase my talent, and then to have me come here and develop me, it's pretty awesome. According to 24-7 Sports, Marshawn was a two-star recruit, the number 158 weak side defensive end, and the 3,427th best player in the class of 2019. His odds of making the NFL were virtually zero. So, how did he end up doing at Western Michigan? Well, let's take a look. 
When Nealon would arrive at Western Michigan, he was apparently the scout team player of the year as a freshman in 2019, and then he ended up starting three games during their 2020 season. He would also appear in four total, finishing with 23 tackles, two and a half sacks, and a forced fumble, and this included 12 tackles against Toledo. This showcased his incredible potential, and he would continue to get better and better over the next few years. As a redshirt freshman in 2021, he would start pretty much every game, this time finishing with 29 tackles, three sacks, and also being a monster on the defensive line. He'd help them get to a bowl game where they would beat Nevada, and then going into 2022, he had a pretty scary defensive line front. It had both Andre Carter and Braden Fisk. As Carter went to Indiana, sadly he would be hurt to start the year, as apparently he got hurt in training camp, but he would still have a really good season, finishing with 40 tackles, 3 sacks, and a forced fumble. He also batted 3 more passes and had 5 quarterback hurries, and PFF and all those numerical sites really liked him. Because of that, he was seen as a 4-star transfer and would decide to make some crazy decisions and go into the portal. Hear from schools all around the country and eventually decided to commit to Coach Prime in Colorado. He visited Boulder and fell in love with it, but after meeting with new Western Michigan head coach Lance Taylor, Nealon decided to stay. He also requested that defensive coordinator Lou Esposito came back to the program, and apparently this was enough for Nealon to change his mind, and he stayed in Kalamazoo for his last college football season. Without Fisk and Carter, he ended up becoming one of the better defensive linemen in the country, finishing with 57 tackles, 4.5 sacks, and 2 forced fumbles. He ended up becoming a second-team All-Max selection, and while Western Michigan wasn't very good, he definitely was. There was one game in particular, which Dane Brugler said, quote, was the best single tape of any pass rusher in 2023. In a 45-21 win, he ended up having 11 tackles, 3 sacks, 4 TFLs, a forced fumble that was recovered for a touchdown, and then was responsible for 2 safeties. Pretty incredible if you ask me. In total in 5 years with the Broncos, Nealon played in 37 games, amassing 13 sacks and 28 tackles for loss. Now when you walk into the Western Michigan Football Center, you're immediately greeted by all-time Bronco greats. In the last few years, there have been guys such as D. Eskridge, Corey Davis, and Sky Moore. And it looks like the next great one is Marshawn Neeland. He said, quote, It's great to be able to be here and put on for these guys. Now I'm about to go to the NFL and have my jersey hang on one of these showcases, and it doesn't get much better than that. At first, according to NFL Mock Database, he was seen as a third-round pick, but by the end of it, he was a projected second-round pick and the 58th best prospect, who had a 7% chance of going in the first round. Why was that? Well, his draft stock rose in recent months as he performed greatly at the Senior Bowl and the Scouting Combine, as he was listed at 6'3 with 267 pounds, and he ran a 4.75 40-yard dash, a 7-second 3-cone drill, and this ranked him first among all the other prospects at his position. Nealon said, quote, The effort, the versatility, the physicality, I have all that. Let's just say that over 50 scouts and coaches from 23 NFL teams didn't make the trip to watch the other guys on Western Michigan's team. They were all there to watch Neeland. One scout said, quote, He's a forceful rusher with a relatively simple game plan, and while he does have some mismatched pieces in his game, he offers toughness and talent to mold. It's also worth noting that his relative athletic score placed him in the top 10% of all defensive ends since 1987. Pretty dang crazy. But usually how things go in life, when something's really good, there's something really bad. Tragedy would hit, as in mid-February, just two months before the draft, the Nealon family suffered a massive loss when his mother Wendy unexpectedly passed away. He said, quote, It was tough, it still is, but I know at the end of the day, the thing that gets me through it is she spent all of her life trying to get me to go here and supported me as much as she could to get me to the NFL. All of those years later, and all his mom's dedication, led to the moment where he was eventually drafted. He said, quote, So the thing I could do now is just make her proud and go out there and be great in the NFL and keep pushing forward. Eventually, Nealon was taken with the 56th overall pick in the second round by the Dallas Cowboys, and while he wasn't really projected there in mock drafts, Cowboys fans were super excited at the kind of athlete he was getting, and the Cowboys were known for getting gems in the second round, so he's someone that many were excited for. Not only does he have a chip on his shoulder and plenty of athleticism to go around, but he'll also be carrying his mom's legacy, as he apparently physically carries the ashes of his mother in a vertically shaped urn on his neck, and he'll wear that on a chain, as you'll probably notice that throughout the season. A lot of people are comparing him to Demarcus Lawrence, and I'm really excited to see what's going to happen to Marshawn Neeland. He has a crazy story from going from one offer to now the biggest stage in the NFL at the Dallas Cowboys, and honestly, he has earned it, and I'm super proud of the guy. 
I'm glad I'm able to share his story on the channel. But what do you guys think? If you're a Cowboys or a Western Michigan fan, what do you think of Marshawn Neeland? Who's another rookie I can cover in my next video? And also, for the greatness of his story, be sure to quickly hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.